The scent of swine doth delight me this fine day. Hey, it's Chris here and welcome to the History Bomb studio. I've got this shiny desk, this mug and this. Plenty more with that later. Now, we're working on some explosive new one takes for you. But in the meantime, I'm going to be traveling around the country exploring some fascinating history. And today we're setting out to answer the age old question. How did some pigs destroy a medieval castle? Over to you, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Today we're chewing the fat on one of the meatiest stories in British history. Oh, and welcome to the History Bomb's car, by the way. Uh, it should probably have a better name like the Past Wagon or the Time Chariot. If you've got a car name suggestion, put it in the comments below and I'll officially christen the car next week. But for now, we'll go with Time Chariot. We're travelling southeast out of London on a road called the A2. This route has existed in some form or another as far back as the Celts and the Romans. It links London to the sea and from the sea to the rest of the empire. And one of the most important parts of the journey is crossing the river Medway. Whoever controlled this crossing had a lot of power over the flow of trade and soldiers in and out of Britain. And it is here at the ancient city of Rochester that our epic pig based story takes place. Onwards time chariot. Welcome to Rochester. This is Rochester Bridge, which crosses the River Medway. There's been a crossing here as far back as Roman times. And up on the hill is Rochester Castle. And yes, it's the tallest medieval stone keep in England. Boom. Rochester Castle was originally built in the 1080s during the reign of William Rufus, son of William the Conqueror, under the guidance of a Norman bishop called Gundulf. You cannot pass Gundulf! Uh, no, Gundulf. Anyway, we can see an original section of Gundalf stone wall over here. The square cutouts at the top are called crenellations and they're designed so that defending soldiers can hide behind them and then pop out and fire arrows at oncoming enemy troops. The imposing stone keep was built from 1127 under William de Corbiel, the Archbishop of Canterbury. And if we hover overhead and look down, we can see that three of the towers are square, but one of the towers is round. And this brings us to our epic Porky story. It's 1215. King John is on the throne and he is not a popular king. He's lost wars with France, raised taxes, and a powerful group of barons had rebelled against him, forcing him to sign a peace treaty that became known as Magna Carta. So, end of story, England lives merrily ever after? Sadly, no. Not only did the Pope step in and declare Magna Carta null and void, but neither King John nor the barons kept to their side of the agreement, leading to a bloody conflict known as the First Barons' War. And the first place the barons came was here. The rebel barons seized Rochester Castle to block John's approach to London. John had to win the castle back. His forces entered the city and began the largest siege the country had ever seen. John pummeled Rochester Castle for two months with heavy stones launched from five siege engines and arrows from his archers and crossbowmen. They had pushed the rebels back into the stone keep, but they couldn't break through the stone walls. And then John had an idea. He decided not to go through the walls, but under. Whilst raining down a relentless barrage of stones and arrows, John ordered his soldiers to dig beneath the keep, creating a hollow mine below. And then he gave one of the strangest commands by an English king. Send to us with all speed by day and night, 40 of the fattest pigs of the sort least good for eating to bring fire beneath the tower. Oink. I added the oink. Before gunpowder came to Europe, pig fat was the most fiery material around, burning at 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. King John's miners used pig fat to set fire to wooden props beneath the keep, causing the southeastern tower to collapse. Now, whilst there's no evidence to support it, I'm hopeful that King John turned away from the crumbling tower and said something epic like, I love the smell of bacon in the morning. I mean, he wasn't American, so probably more like, um, the scent of swine doth delight me this fine day. John breached Rochester Castle. However, it was actually starvation and not force that made the barons finally surrender. During the reign of his son, Henry III, the southeastern tower was rebuilt with the round design we see today. So there you have it, a nearly invincible medieval fortress laid low by 40 little piggies. They'll huff and they'll puff and they'll burn your stone keep down. Back to you in the studio, Chris. 
Thanks, Chris. What a meaty slice of history. If you'd like to watch more history videos about medieval kings and castles, go to historybombs.com and check out our medieval video series. There's a great video all about medieval castle design, which is a personal fave. Also, Rochester Castle is now open for visitors. You can go inside and take a look around. It's an extraordinary building. Rochester Cathedral is right next door, which has some fascinating history as well. Well worth a trip. Rochester, check it out. Right. It's about time to wrap it up like a pig in a blanket. Oh yeah. Get ready. Bunny meet England, 1215. There's a tent in a field, such a famous scene. The barons make John sign a royal charter. What was it called? Oh yeah, Magna Carta. The birth of democracy? No, a disaster. The Pope decrees it, a total non-starter. Sorry, King John, we can't deliver your parcel. And oh, your bounds just took Rochester Castle. For two months straight, John hammers the keep. But the walls are too strong, the foundation's too deep. Five siege engines can't seal the deal. So John has a plan to make the barons squeal. John means business, you know he's not faking. He's putting in a supersized order for bacon. Get me 40 fat pigs in double quick quick time. We're taking down a tower with the power of swine. I can hear the barons now saying, no my liege, don't take us down in a piggy siege. But it's too late to beg, borrow or barter, cause neither side is sticking to the Magna Carta. Oh fire, fire, fire in the hole. The castle's undermined and it's about to blow. Your fancy crenellations and your fancy talk, all burning in a massive conflagration of pork. What? Whew. Um, thank you very much for watching. Um, if for more History Bombs videos, go to historybombs.com. And if you'd like to support our YouTube channel, please go to our Patreon page. And uh, if you've got a name for our car, put it in the comments and we'll pick one very soon. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon.